Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. You may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Excuse me, Monsieur. Pierre asked me to inform you that a passenger left us, so his room is yours. Monsieur Bouc instructed that your things be transferred to room 202 during dinner. You will be more comfortable in first class. It is true what you say. Thank you, uh... Mr. Fouché, Monsieur. Please, my friend, join me. I have taken the liberty of ordering you your lobster. Thank you. It appears our fellow passengers are all gathered here again tonight. Ah. If I had but the pen of a Balzac, I would depict the scene. Oh, it is an idea, that. Ah, you agree. It has not been done, I think, and yet... It lends itself to romance, my friend. All around us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. For three days, these people, these strangers to one another, are brought together. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from each other. At the end of the journey, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. Certainly it interests us, inviting us to watch and wonder about their lives. Ah, I know you, my friend. Even now, your mind, it is at work. Let us test it. For example, what do you make of those two? You can feel the power of our engine. We climb into the mountains with ease. I know something about the power, and this baby has it in spades. There's something special about a train. I'll give you that. I sell toys, and model trains are one of our biggest items. And not just for children, either. You sell model cars, too? Sure, but give me a train any day. Oh, my friend. What do you have against the cars? Now I work at Fortuna in Italy. As a spokesperson, we are producing the next generation of electric cars, the Fortuna Firenze. Like the city, it is beautiful. We got the competitors looking over their shoulders so much, they're going to hit something. Didn't mean to be insulting. It's just that there's something magical about a train. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. The loud gentleman is very confident, a master of his own fate. It is as much in the inflection as it is in the words. He believes in winning, also that he is the one who will win. You are a magician. 
Oh, it is not a parlor trick, my friend. It is simply observation. I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. And you, uh, Miss Debenham, was it? Where do you hail from? I was born in the U.K. Oh, that's in England, isn't it? What do you do for a living? I teach English to children in other countries. I see. Oh, I wish I spoke a foreign language. My daughter speaks several languages. Let me tell you about her work. It's very important. Think, Poirot. That is not a good answer. That's the right answer. There is much you can learn about someone just by observing them and listening. For example, that lady is reserved. She reveals little. She is self-contained. Some secret prompts her to allow her dinner companion to carry the conversation. I confess, in this case, what I witnessed in Istanbul suggests more. But I will respect her privacy. You will always amaze me. My friend, this is one of the best desserts I have ever eaten. You have always had the sweet tooth. But this... This... It is a masterpiece. I can't understand how the dessert can be so good. I would love to know what the recipe is. I couldn't tell what flavor the ice cream is. It looks like lemon. Look at the zest. Yes, I wasn't sure what that was. W what is the red fruit? It looks like a raspberry. Mm. You have a good eye, Poirot. The biscuit is the foundation of the dessert. All else is built upon it. What do you think? It looks like crushed biscuits, my friend. Finally observed, indeed. Poirot, I am embarrassed to ask you a great favor. My friend, I am on this train due to the great favor you have done me. How may I assist you? This dessert is sublime. If only I had the recipe. Unfortunately, the pastry chef, Miss Nielsen, she will guard her secrets. But you, my friend, I am sure you could make her confess. You wish me to persuade the pastry chef to give up her recipe? You who are the expert at interrogation. Book, it is a dessert. It is the pinnacle of desserts. You, my friend, who, as you say, are on this train I blush to remind you. Fine, you win. Again, what wouldn't I do for you, my friend? Oh, thank you, Poirot. Good luck. Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, sir. How can I help you? That was a magnificent dessert you served us tonight. I wanted to tell you personally how much both Monsieur Bouc and I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, sir. 
In fact, it is so good, Monsieur Book insists on knowing how you made it. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You must know a chef never gives away their recipes. But, well, you helped with the refrigerator, and without space in it for me, there would have been no dessert. Very well. To prepare tonight's dessert, first I melt sugar to make caramel. Then I spread this caramel to make tuile. Between two tuiles, I add a small scoop of lemon ice cream, and I put the whole thing on a strawberry crown. Poirot, you are suspicious even now. The pastry chef gave up her prized recipe a little too easily. I sense she wasn't entirely honest with me. Thank you for sharing your recipe with me, but I doubt those are strawberries you're using. Oops. You have a good eye, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. What fruit do you think I used? You used raspberries, not strawberries. I'm not fooled. You're right. Mr. Book, he couldn't tell the difference. Let's move on to the bottom part of the dessert. My favorite part of the dessert. First, I melted some butter. I crumbled pieces of chocolate into the butter. Then I placed the mix in a circular mold. Finally, I let the whole thing cool down to let it harden. It's certainly not chocolate that you've crumbled. I see you do have an excellent palate. Do you know what ingredients I used? A clever pastry chef might mix crushed biscuits with butter to create this delicious base. That's it. You're getting closer to the entire recipe. Closer? <laughs> I've caught murderers with less difficulty than this. I'll give you one last challenge. I'm sure you will be able to figure out the order I mix my ingredients in, if you can. You will have earned my recipe. Mademoiselle, solving the murder of Roger Ackroyd was easier than this. That was easy. As promised, my recipe is yours. Give me five minutes to write it down for you. Thank you. I am in your debt. I can take advantage of this moment to resume my little observations of the pastel. Did you enjoy the meal? I'm not used to meals like this. You do not have good restaurants in Kenya? Actually, we do. This is in the 1930s. I did not mean to offend. You didn't like the meal? The lobster, it was undercooked, and the potatoes were too dry. I expect, being Princess Dragomirov's assistant, you must be used to eating well. Cooking is an art. You do not need to wear the chef's hat to be an artist. What is your favorite dish? Currywurst. It is a specialty of mine. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. I made a lot of progress on the expenses last night, sir. I should be done by tomorrow morning. You're supposed to be a fast worker, Hector. Sorry, sir. Working here is not as comfortable as in our office in Boston. You're lucky to ride in a train like this.
My little gray cells did not let me down. Here you are, sir. My recipe. Please tell Mr. Book he should not expect my recipes for the other desserts. Thank you very much, mademoiselle. I know he will sincerely appreciate the gesture, and I will make certain he gets the message. Poirot, you were gone such a long time. It proved more challenging than I expected. This is wonderful. Did it require the use of your little gray cells? More the exercise of my little taste buds. Thank you so much, my friend. Eat your dessert. You've earned it. Good evening. My name is Ratchet. I think that I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Hercule Poirot, is that so? You have been correctly informed, Monsieur. Your exploits are well known on my side of the Atlantic. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. Are you interested in earning a lot of money? My clientele, Monsieur, is limited nowadays. I undertake very few cases. Why, naturally. I understand that. But this, Mr. Poirot, means big money. Big money. Et voilà. What is it you wish me to do for you, Monsieur uh, Ratchet? Mr. Poirot, I am a rich man. A very rich man. Men in that position have enemies. I have an enemy. Monsieur, in my experience, when a man is in a position to have, as you say, enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy only. Yes, I appreciate that point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. What does matter is my safety. My life has been threatened, Mr. Poirot. Now, I'm a man who can take pretty good care of himself. But as I look at it, a little insurance wouldn't hurt. And remember, big money. I regret, monsieur, that I cannot oblige you. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal, I do not like your face, Mr. Ratchet. Now, oh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish my coffee peacefully. A nightcap, Monsieur Poirot? A cup of coffee, Monsieur Fauché. Then I will retire to my new compartment. I am sure you will find it to be most comfortable. We have stopped? Yes, sir. Belgrade Station. If you'd like to go out and get some fresh air, now is the time. The train leaves at 9.15. No, no, I see that it is snowing. I will not seek out the fresh air. Probably a wise decision. May I suggest a chocolate to accompany your coffee? It is produced by my father, the best chocolatier in Switzerland. I would never refuse a chocolate with such high recommendation. I know you will enjoy it, and please let me know if there is anything else you require. That was easy. 
Everything was perfect. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Is there anything you require, monsieur? No, merci. Why, I thought you'd left us. You said you were getting off at Belgrade. You misunderstood me. But, man, your baggage, it's gone. It has been moved into another compartment, that is all. Oh, I see. I wish you a good night, Monsieur Poirot. Good night. I hope you'll sleep well and that your head will be better in the morning. It is just the cold. I'm now making myself a cup of tea. I hope it'll warm you up. I hope so. Good night. Well, good night, my dear. What a brave girl. On the other hand, that man there in the next cabin, Monsieur Ratchet, he scares the hell out of me. There's something wrong about that man. My daughter always says I'm very intuitive. When Mama gets a hunch, she's dead right. That's what my daughter says. And I've got a hunch about that man. He's next door to me, and I don't like it. I put my bags against the communicating door last night. <laughs> I thought I heard him trying the handle. Well, whoever you are, I'm going right to bed to read. Good night. Good night, madam. Whoever I am. Monsieur Ratchet seems very upset. fit for a king, or a very tired detective. Ratchet? Ce n'est rien. Je me suis trompé. Good night, madame. The American lady? Yes, don't worry. You'll know how Mrs. Hubbard is. Imagine to yourself the time I have had with her. She insists, but insists that there is a man in her compartment. Just imagine it, monsieur. In a space of this size, where would he conceal himself? I argue with her. I point out that it is impossible. She insists. She woke up and there was a man there. And how, I ask, did he get out and leave the door bolted behind him? But she will not listen to reason. Hmm. That one does not leave time to listen. The train has stopped, Mr. Michel. We have run into a snowdrift. Heaven knows how long we shall be here. 
I remember once being snowed in for seven days. Where are we? Between Vinkovsky and Brod. Oh la la. It's time for me to go back to bed. I wish you a good night, monsieur. Or what is left of it. Thank you.